Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Versify. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that here in First Five is by spending some time together, digging into the Word of God, learning and growing in God's Word, and by spending some time together in prayer. And so every morning we read some scripture together, and I offer up to you every day one chapter of scripture that I've read, and I invite you to read with me. And then we take a portion of that and we kind of explore it a little bit deeper, trying to draw some meaning and application for our lives. And so we are currently working our way through Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, Paul, uh, Second Corinthians, and today we are in chapter 6. And so if you have a Bible handy, um, I would invite you to join me. Um, at the end, I hope you'll read the whole of chapter 6, but for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. So grab your Bible, pull it up on your phone, join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 14. The Apostle Paul writes, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light and have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Baal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Those last couple of sections are actually quotes. You can't see it, but if you're reading along with me, you'll see that it's a quote from uh, the book of Isaiah. So he pulls those passages out to kind of reinforce what he's talking about here. Now, this whole paragraph is really summed up in the opening line. Do not be yoked to unbelievers. How many of you know what a yoke is? Are you familiar with that? Have you seen one perhaps? Now, if you've ever worked on a farm, you're probably very familiar with what a yoke is. They were pretty common in the old days. Uh, and even to this, to this day, some people still use them to pull a plow or to log with or that sort of thing. So basically a yoke is this piece of wood that's kind of shaped in a way that's got these two little humps taken out of it that you set over the shoulders of two animals and these two large U-shaped rings go underneath uh, the shoulder blades of the animals and up through the wood and it allows two animals to work together side by side pulling a plow or dragging logs out of the woods or any other kind of heavy work like that right and so they're made to yoke or pull together two animals to work side by side and so Paul is saying in this passage do not be yoked to unbelievers now, I've heard this passage actually fairly frequently applied to marriage, saying, you know, don't be bound together in marriage with an unbelieving spouse. And I'll be honest, I think there's some real wisdom in that. I think we put ourselves in a very difficult situation when we choose to marry someone who does not share our faith. Uh, I think to the extent that we're able to uh, have some choice about that, I think it is always wise to be married to someone who shares your common faith. If When we're in those situations, and I know it happens sometimes because uh, two unbelieving people within a couple, you know, one gets saved and the other isn't or something like that, and so they end up in that situation. But, but if you can choose from the beginning, I would strongly encourage us not to be yoked to an unbelieving spouse. I think it just adds tremendous stress to the relationship that is unnecessary and often undermines the faith of the believer and stresses and frustrates the unbeliever. Not that they can't be saved, because that does sometimes happen, but even Paul acknowledges 
And we don't always have control over that. So anyways, I think it can be used in marriage, but this passage doesn't just say in marriage. It says unbelievers, plural. And to this, to, to me rather, this means that this is applied to all unbelievers, any kind of relationship, marriage, friendship, uh, business partnership, whatever. But here's my question. If we are not to be yoked to unbelievers, how do we witness? How do we evangelize? How do we share faith? I have to be honest, I think it's very easy to misapply this passage. When he says, do not be yoked, I don't think he's necessarily saying, don't even associate with, don't ever be friends with, don't ever talk to unbelievers. When he says yoke, I believe he's talking about something deeper, something more significant, a, a deeper bond, bond. To be yoked is to be bound to a person for the purpose of taking on a life's work, a heavy task, a, a, an aspect of mission perhaps. And so I believe when Paul speaks of being yoked to someone, he's talking about a deep and significant connection. Once you are yoked, once two animals are yoked together, they're going everywhere together. If one goes to the right, the other is going to the right. If one goes at a certain speed, the other is going to go at that speed. There's no separating the two. And so when we read this, I don't want us to think that Paul is saying that he doesn't want you talking to or associating with someone who does not yet know Christ. I think we have to do that. I think all believers ought to have relationships with people who do not yet know Christ. It's a way for us to, to share our faith and fulfill the mission of the church. But I believe he is saying that we ought to be wise about who we walk in lockstep with. If it's the wrong person, if it's a person who doesn't share our faith, whose life is going in a different direction than ours is, it can slow us down, it can change our direction, it can even stop us. I think we all need unchurched friends and acquaintances. But when it comes to who we will be inseparably linked with for life, who we're going to pour our lives into and allow to influence us, it ought to be people who share our faith in Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this important teaching from Paul. And Lord, it's challenging because... You know, sometimes we do have friends, sometimes we do have people that we've maybe developed an intimate relationship with who are not believers. But Lord, what he's trying to warn us about is that that can be, that can be problematic. That can sometimes lead us away from Christ. So that can sometimes keep us from pursuing our life's work and mission and calling. And so help us, Lord, to be wise about who we are yoked to in this life. Help us to make good choices that honor Christ and that allow us to fulfill the work that he has called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday. God bless.